Is there really iodine in my salt? So I first saw this experiment done on Tom Coo's Kunzel, Tom Kunzelman's channel. Yeah, there are a lot of other cool experiments. When I saw this particular one, I definitely wanted to try it out. It's a real clever way to pull the iodine off of the salt, and then you can use the iodine uh, to do a basic starch test. But there were a couple of other things that I noticed in there that I was just curious about and I wanted to try. So I have a couple more jars here, but let's just go ahead and get started and I'll explain things as we go along. First, we're gonna add about 125 milliliters of water. These ball cups have numbers on them. The reason I'm doing 125 milliliters is because that is how big my jars are. Now this is just tap water. It is in a jug, but this is just tap water. It doesn't really need to be deionized because we're doing stuff. We're doing salty stuff, so it's not gonna really affect the experiment. I am gonna use different stirring sticks, of AKA butter knives. Okay, so recipe. The recipe says we're gonna do two tablespoons of each kind of salt. Two tablespoons and two tablespoons. So this is the regular salt one we're basically going for super saturated two okay there's that one now this is the supposedly iodized salt here one two stir oh wait uh there my hands go in different circles so what i want to do is with this one over here I want to add two tablespoons of, of just salt salt, pickling salt, which supposedly I'm, I'm pretty sure doesn't have any additional additives. Yeah, see it says here on the ingredients, we have calcium oh, salt, calcium silicate. So calcium silicate, I guess, is the uh, thing. So that probably won't react as a starch. What's this one say? Calcium silicate, potassium iodide, and dextrose. Um, the dextrose might interact with the iodine. Anyways, one, two. Okay, so really all this one is about is I'm gonna mix it and see if it gets as cloudy as the other two. All right, anyway, so this last one, what I'm going to do is since this has an additive of dextrose, um, and I'm thinking that maybe the iodine will react with that, I don't know off the top of my head whether dextrose counts as a starch or not, but I'm gonna do one, two. Um, iodized, iodized, not iodized, and then not even a uh, anti-caking agent. Just to, you know, see uh, if there's any significant differences here. Okay, enough mixing for right now. Next step is I need to add a bit of vinegar because right now the iodine ions in this salt are floating around. Is, is the electrons move around and, <laughs> wow, that's not very clear. Um, I don't know, I'll put up the equation. Um, but this is what we're doing <laughs> for the equation here. Um, so we, the H plus over here, that's what I need to add the, the acid for, okay? That's what, that's what I need to add the acid for. And then we'll add the H2O2 later, the, the hydrogen peroxide later. So we need about one teaspoon vinegar. I just bought this. Arr, man, weak I am. One teaspoon vinegar. I'm just gonna set this one aside. Um, really all I wanted to show, so this is the pickling salt. Um, and you can see, you can still kind of see through it. Where this one um, is the regular table salt and it has the anti-caking agent in it. And that's why it's kind of that darker color. Um, and this one has both the anti-caking agent, the calcium silicate and some dextrose. Um, oh, ah! <sighs> Um, so I'm going to redo uh, this one now. <sighs> one, two. Here's what's going on. The iodine ions have an extra electron. So we're putting hydrogen in there, okay? So in the form of acid, hydrogen ions in the form of an acid, which is gonna be the vinegar. And what that is going to do is that's gonna pull 
an extra uh, electron off of the iodine, okay? But then that hydrogen ion, hydrogen doesn't have anywhere to go all by itself. So what we do is we add H2O2 or hydrogen peroxide so that there's an extra oxygen floating around for that hydrogen to then go and attach itself to. Then what ends up happening is the iodine can then just bind back to itself rather than being an ion with an additional electron. Okay, let's add the vinegar. What was I looking for? I was looking at one teaspoon of vinegar to each of these. Plain salt, and both of these are iodized salt. One teaspoon. Oop, that's a little more than one teaspoon. So is that. It's not, not super important on this one in terms of uh, detailed amounts. Just gonna give that a little bit of a stir. Next step is to go ahead and add some starch. Now, I'm gonna leave one of these with no starch because I think that the dextrose will react, but these two I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of uh, cornstarch too. It doesn't really say how much. I'm just gonna give it a little scoop. Plop, plop, but not that one. Okay, mix that up in there. Make it very gloopy looking. Mix this one up too, why not? Nope. Oh, would you look at that? This one is already changing color. Now, all I did was I added acid. I didn't add the, the, the activating agent of the hydrogen peroxide, which should free up more of the uh, hydrogen. So that means that there must have been enough extra free oxygen in this already, probably from me stirring, that those hydrogen ions were able to react. So immediately you see the reaction. That's pretty good. So probably we'll be able to darken it, but obviously the ones with the iodized salt, as soon as I put the starch in, bam, it changed color. Now, what I want to know is if I activate this solution by adding the hydrogen peroxide, if it will darken even a little bit, or if I add hydrogen peroxide to this, if it'll, if it'll um, activate or if it'll get darker. But then, uh, but you know, right here, right here, it proves it that this is iodized salt. There is iodine in it. I'm gonna take this hydrogen peroxide and add about a tablespoon to each one of these. This is just, you know, regular hydrogen peroxide that you get at the store, really, you know, 3%. So this one, let's see, stirring it, stirring it, still, ooh. No, still pretty much nothing. This one now, with the hydrogen peroxide. No, it doesn't seem significantly darker. It seems like it did what it was gonna do. Let's see if this one does any change. Nope. Well, um, you know, that's interesting. Um, just for, for the heck of it, let's go ahead and add a little bit of starch now to this one, to the, to the last one. I haven't added any starch to this last one, but it has iodized salt, hydrogen peroxide, and a bit of vinegar. So probably when I put this in here, it'll change fairly rapidly. Let's go ahead and give it a little stir. Get it out, there it goes. Squash that corn starch right up. That's pretty cool. Uh, so now this one does seem a lot darker than the other one. Maybe it's because I put the hydrogen peroxide in before I added the starch so that the iodine had more time to free up. Whereas this one with the starch, it was probably doing some other reactions on top of that. Because what happens is when the starch goes in, it attaches to the iodine. And the reason that it darkens is because the orbitals change. And so instead of just reflecting all the light that's coming in here, it's absorbing some of the light, which is what, you know, what makes something dark. Looking good. All right, last step here is um, vitamin C. So this is ascorbic acid, but you know, one of the reasons that it is a healthy, useful thing for you is that it, um, um, but, um, I don't know, I don't really exactly know, but I know it's supposed to reverse the reaction. I'm getting tired. I'll put up the, um, the chemical equation here um, so that um, you can see. Oh, look, it's got a little scooper. Uh, that's a little smaller than I want. I still want to do about another, another tablespoon. Let's make sure this is dry. Okay, so I'm gonna do about a tablespoon and I went ahead and got powdered vitamin C. You know, you can 
crush up on one, but I think this will work. So this should, let's leave this one alone so you can see the difference, but this should lighten the solution. You know, it won't be able to completely get rid of it. Yeah, it's kind of a gray, grayish milky gloop color. Fully, you know, starch iodine reaction, and this is reversed. So it's not fully back to normal because there's a bunch of glunk in there now, and I've made brown water. Really, but that's, yeah, it's still, it's still impressive. I wonder if I add a little more to it, if it'll get a little bit lighter. Let's give it a shot. I don't think that it will. I think that there's just a certain amount of iodine that's going to, god dang it. Twice. Um, I think I'm gonna call it there. Things I'm learning. One, I need shorter, less massive sticks. Two, my table that I'm working on is slightly tilted. And so this is probably going to be a thing I need to cope with in the future. It seems like it's slightly tilted backwards, which isn't helping matters. So yeah. Oh, that was the one thing I wanted to do too. I wanted to do one more test because earlier this evening, I happened to be doing some stuff with potatoes. What I want to do is make up one more mixture, but don't add any starch. No starch, okay? I'm gonna use this one because it was just the pickling salt, so not a lot went on with it. One more time. Some water, iodized salt. Why are these always so hard to open? One, two, okay, stir. Let's add a little bit of vinegar. I want to add a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. This solution should have iodine in it, uh, iodine molecules in it, okay? And those are going to react with any starch that they come in contact with. So, all I need to do is get a starch and uh, drip some of this on here. Eyedroppers. And then earlier today, I was skinning some potatoes. Um, I don't know which order the videos are gonna go up, but uh, I'll put a link whenever it's available. Anyway, so I have some bits of potato, which as you know, are starchy. So, theoretically, if I did this right, and I drip on here, I should get a uh, decoloration on the potato. Let's just see what happens. It's not working. Hmm. Let's try. Just straight up cornstarch, try dripping onto that. Hmm? Nope, it seems like the amount of iodine just isn't enough. Just to make sure I didn't do something silly when I made it this last time, let's go ahead and add this cornstarch. Confirm once again that there's iodine in the, uh... what? What did I do wrong? I, no, I didn't. I used this salt. Iodized. Well, it's not a you can science it video if I don't get confused. Um, my guess is that there wasn't enough vinegar or possibly enough salt. It worked so well the first time. That's really weird. Try it again. I suppose it's possible that I, I inhibited the reaction somehow by using the wrong stirrer. Some water. Iodized salt. One, two. One teaspoon vinegar. That's about what I did last time. Yep, that's what I did last time. <gasps> oh, the teaspoon. Oh, the teaspoon had citric acid or had um uh you know the the um ascorbic acid on it had the vitamin c on it oh maybe i ruined it i mean obviously i ruined it but maybe that's how i ruined it so a little extra vinegar and add a little bit of okay Let's just stir it a bit more, just to make sure that all of the iodine ions made it out. Yeah, 
Yeah. That's good. If it's fizzing, that means the uh, hydrogen peroxide. I don't know. I don't know if that'll pick up on my mic. Probably not. Oh, there. Oh, yeah, that worked. That worked. So, um, let's see. Try it on the potato now. So, let's get a fresh piece of potato. Okay. Fresh potato chunk. Yeah. Kind of. I rub it around a little. Well, anyway, I'm fairly confident. Um, so, it, it works. I mean, it works as an indicator solution to drip on things, but not very well. Um, which is, you know, to be expected. And you could go to the store and just buy iodine, which would be easier. Use that scoop. Plop. Let's see if it'll do it one more time. Um, it should. It did it on the spoon, which gives me hope. Oh, it's working! And there, proof of iodine. You know, as usual, I am going to go ahead and do a full write-up of this, including my mistakes and my, uh, <laughs> you know, some of the things I learned about not using the same tablespoon. So dumb. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do a write-up like I typically do on youcanscienceit.com. I had fun with this one. Um, I strongly suggest you check out uh, Kutzelman's channel. I can't remember his name, Tom Kutzelman. I strongly recommend you check out his channel. He has a lot of cool stuff and this is pretty much taken wholesale from that, well, aside from the mistake, you know, but you don't have to take my word for it that there really is iodine in uh, iodized salt because you can science it. 